In this session, we're going to go ahead and start working with brushes. And I want to go over a few things just so you understand a little bit more about the functionality of brushes and you're able to work with them effectively. A lot of people overlook brushes because they do some experimentation with them and they kind of feel they don't work, but that's because they're not really understanding how the brushes function and how to work with them. Go ahead and start in this session. The first thing that I want to do is just create a simple brush. And I'm going to create a brush that's nothing more than a simple vector square. I'm going to fill that with black and I'll take the outline off of that. I'm going to open my artistic media docker right here and I'm just going to go ahead and left click and drag this rectangle into my docker and it's going to ask me what type of stroke I'd like to create. I'm going to select brushes. I don't want an object spray and I'm going to select OK. Now I've got this set up here but I'm actually going to take this to my desktop and I'm going to go to brushes and I'm going to create a new folder here and in that new folder I'll call that my box, or I'll just call that my strokes. And you can do the same. You can create your own brush strokes and save them. But inside of my strokes here, I'm just going to call this box or rectangle and select save. Now, once that brush is created, I can actually go here to my artistic media tool and browse, or I could come over here and browse. But I'm going to come here and browse. And if I come down here through brushes, I'll now see my strokes. I can open that and now I'll see that one stroke available there. Now when I click that, because I had the box selected, it applied that stroke to the block box. Now something you want to be very careful about when you're dealing with this, let me go ahead and hit Control Z here. I'm going to do a save because if you have a complex object, complex object selected when you're working with brushes, for instance this baseball, and I'll go ahead and ungroup this. I've got I want to ungroup all, and I'm going to lasso everything here. Four objects selected, and you can see we've got a very complex set of vector objects here with a lot of lines and information. If I have this selected, or a complex graphic selected, and then I click, next thing you know I'm going to be tied up in Corel processing this brush stroke to my graphic, and quite often if I've got something really complex selected, I can crash Corel as a result of having something selected when I click on my brushes. So we want to make sure when we're working with our brushes that we click off of our objects before we click on brushes or else if we've got a complex bunch of objects selected and we click on a brush, Corel will apply that to the brush. And you can see now my Corel is processing here and I could end up being here for five or six minutes. So what I want to do is typically what I would because of the length and the number of nodes in this graphic, it could take it 20 minutes to process. So what I would do typically at this point in time is I would make sure I had everything saved, which I just did a save before I did this because I did it for the video. But I would hit control alt delete because I don't want to be here for 20 minutes. I would go to my task manager and I would shut Corel down. Now that process, but you can go to your processes here you can go by image name and go down to Corel and you could shut it down that way because sometimes it will be processing for a very long time and that's not what I wanted. So I'm going to hit Control Z from Corel and we'll let that go. Now, realizing that we want to be aware of that particular aspect of dealing with brushes, we also want to be aware, I'm going to go ahead and delete this and here's my rectangle, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to create a simple brush stroke with my rectangle. And you'll notice that the longer my brush stroke is, you can see the effect that it's having on my rectangle. And I'll go ahead and go to my pick tool, double click this, and I'll get the node that's associated with that. And you can see that there's some destruction going on here based on what's happening with my nodes and lines and the way they're attached to that rectangle. If I'm up here, it comes down to a point, as you can see there, because the brush is set up with only four nodes and because it only has four nodes Corel can't really handle the shape very well. Now I'm going to hit control Z and go back to my rectangle and then I'm going to go ahead and convert this to curves and I'm going to take this rectangle I'm going to come up here and hit plus and add some nodes to that and then I'm going to create another rectangle and I want to drag this right in here 
brushes, go to my strokes, and we'll call this, let me see, I want to go to my desktop brushes. This is in my Corel brushes. I want to go to my desktop brushes here, and I'll go to my strokes. I'm going to call this box 2. And I'm going to select save. Now I've got box 1, box 2. Now I'm going to create another stroke. That's with box 1. This is with box 2. And you can see the difference. By adding the nodes to that shape, I'm getting a lot more accuracy in this brush because I've got extra nodes in there. So the nodes and the way in which we set up our actual graphics before we convert them to brushes, and I'm going to change this to a curve, really impacts the performance of our brushes. Because if I go back to the other one here, you can see I'm getting a very different performance only because I added these nodes here. And now I've got more nodes that are available. There's more, there's more nodes or data information available in this rectangular graphic for the brush to work with to conform it to the path of the line. So we know that having these nodes is going to make a big difference when we're creating our own brushes. Now sometimes if we're working with a brush, we're having problems with it, we could take that brush apart apply some more notes to it, then reapply it to a brush and it'll start to function correctly. Now there's obviously limitations and we'll see that throughout the training, but we want to be aware of the nodes and how we set up our brushes before we work with them as brushes in Corel Draw. Another thing we want to take a look at here, I'll go back here and we'll take a look at if we've got really jaggy lines in our graphic, you can see that's performing pretty well. Go back to the other one that's not performing very well. Now this being very big, if we go to view wireframe, you can see how that my brush is flowing along that line. But sometimes if you've got a brush, for example, I'll go ahead and open, let's say, one of my um, wings. They're very complex. One of my hand-drawn wings. So I'll go here to hand-drawn wings. I'll select OK and I'll create a very jaggy type of wing. And we'll come down here and we'll put a wing on that. And then we'll go to View and Enhanced. Now you can see what's happening is the way in which my vector object flows across that line, I'm destroying the wing. So there's limitations in working with brushes that are based on what we can do with our lines and the graphics we're working with. Now, this particular line is no problem whatsoever for my simple rectangle graphic, but for my wing, it destroys it. So for the wing, I'm really only going to be able to work with some lines like this here that are much smoother, etc., as you can see there. Now also you can see when you're drawing with your brushes, if you go from left to right, and we'll change our wing, change back to our wing here, we'll start from the left and go to the right. If we go back the other way, It'll go in the other direction, and of course now it's upside down. Now also, dealing with the fact that we have nodes and lines attached to these brushes, I can double click here and go to my line segment with nodes. It's very similar to working with your lines and nodes and draw. If I come up here in my properties bar, and I reverse my curve direction, that'll change the direction of my brush as you can see right there. So you want to be aware of all these different things when you're dealing with these brushes so you can work with them effectively. Go ahead and end here and we'll continue on working with brushes in our next session.